Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know what acids and bases are, but we need to be able to describe and predict the strength of an acid or base. One way to do this is to look at pKa and pKb values. So let's learn exactly what these are. We may recall that the strength of an acid is measured by how much of the acid deprotonates in solution. If every single molecule of the acid loses a proton, it is a strong acid. If very few of them lose a proton, it is a weak acid. Proton transfer can be described as an equilibrium, since the conjugate base is capable of accepting a proton to become the acid again. This equilibrium is described with the acid dissociation constant, Ka. Ka will be equal to the hydronium ion concentration times the concentration of the conjugate base, divided by the concentration of the acid. If all of the acid deprotonates, the numerator is very big, and Ka is very big. If very little of the acid deprotonates, the denominator is very big, and Ka is very small. In general, Ka values tend to use scientific notation, which can get tedious, so we will quantify acidity using pKa instead. This just means the negative log of the Ka. This takes something like 10 to the negative 6 and turns it into simply the number 6, which is much tidier and more convenient for communication. The larger the Ka, the smaller the resulting pKa, which means that smaller pKa values correlate with greater acidity. So pKa values will be the way we report the acidity of a molecule, and eventually even specific hydrogen atoms within a molecule, which will have varying acidities depending on structural factors. Water has a pKa of just under 16, so this is a good reference. Molecules with a pKa much lower than this, around 5 or less, are considered to be quite acidic, with some having pKa values of negative 10 or even lower. When looking at a base, we can do the same thing with pKb values. These are just the negative log of Kb values, which are base dissociation constants. These quantify the basicity of a molecule, just like a Ka quantifies acidity. So if we remember just one thing, it should be that a lower pKa means a stronger acid, and a lower pKb means a stronger base. And later, we will talk about how to tell which acids and bases are stronger based on their structures. One last thing we should understand is that the stronger an acid or base, the weaker its conjugate. In other words, the better a molecule is able to give up a proton, the less likely its conjugate is to gain one. And the less likely a molecule is to give up a proton, the better its conjugate will be at gaining one. Some pKa values for common functional groups will easily be memorized over time, simply through repetition. But for now, let's simply make sure we understand what pKa is and precisely how it reports the acidity of a compound, in that a lower pKa corresponds with a stronger acid. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.